Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I'm so, so glad to be bringing God's truth to you this new week. Now listen, I know the Spirit of God has many things in store for you. See, the Bible lets us know that the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now that's instructive, letting you know that everything God will ever do in your life, He has finished it. Praise God. And I'll tell you a good news. Everything God did, He looked at it and He, in His wisdom, in His excellence, called it good. Praise God. Yeah. Now, now that's God's plan for your life and that's exactly what He has done. So listen, expect good things in your life this week, even as we bring forth this, the word of this broadcast and what I'm going to be sharing with you this week. And we call for our daily bread as the Lord has instructed us. Join me in faith right now because I'm believing God for a miracle. I don't know about you, praise God. But hey, guess what? I'm also believing for a miracle for you. Yeah, because when the Lord says in this broadcast, lead my children to call for their daily bread, to make demand for their daily bread as Jesus taught us to do. I believe him that he is ready to supply. So if you believe like me, join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I demand today my daily bread. I believe you supply these things. And therefore, I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking all months about being fruitful and being productive. And our text scripture, I don't want you to forget this, so we'll go back there again. Our text scripture is from Colossians chapter 1. And... I'll read from verse 9, actually verse 9 and 10. It says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will, that's God's will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will. Oh, wonderful that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, that you will know, not just know it, be filled with the knowledge of his will. That means, you know, when, when, when you're full of something, <laughs> you may know something, but yet not full of it. The liquid may be in the cup, but not full of it. The cup may not be full of the liquid. But when it is full, then the liquid takes the shape of the container. So when he's talking about being filled or being full with the knowledge of his will, it means the will of God, the knowledge of the will of God in everything fills your whole system, fills your whole mind. Now you you understand why Jesus, you remember the scribe that came to meet Jesus and he said, he asked Jesus, what is the first commandment? And Jesus answered him and said, this is the first commandment. The Lord God is one. And therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart heart with all your soul and with all your mind with all your strength when jesus finished explaining the scribe said to him he said you are right and then he gave the reason why he said jesus was right and he said to love god with all the understanding is far better than any sacrifice that anyone would give. Now, he wasn't saying God doesn't receive sacrifices. You remember what Samuel said to Saul. He said, Saul, 
because God had given him instructions on what to do. He didn't keep the instructions. Rather, he brought some of the things and wanted to use them as sacrifice to the Lord. So Samuel said to him, Saul, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hack him far better than the fat of rams. So this scribe said to Jesus, to love God with all the understanding. I love that word. All the understanding. All. All. Not just to love God with understanding, but to love God with all understanding is far better than any kind of sacrifice you want to give to the Lord. Because now that's when you will understand the purpose of sacrifice. That's when you will understand the purpose of offerings. People give offerings in ignorance. And that's why your offerings don't produce results. Or sometimes it produce today, tomorrow it doesn't produce. Why? Because you lack understanding. But, but Jesus said, you must love God with all your mind. So when he says here that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, you don't have space for any other thing. Oh, no wonder Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I'll tell you the truth. If you obey Jesus to seek that first, this is the truth. You will be filled with the knowledge of the kingdom. There will be space for nothing else in you. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. He didn't say, seek it first. So, okay, that's the thing I'm going to do first. So when I do it first, ah, God, I, I've done it. I have sought your kingdom. Now I want to go do other things. I'm telling you, when you seek the kingdom first, by the things you will find in the kingdom, you will become so occupied and so full of it, you will have no time to go seek any other thing. Now that's why he said, every other thing will be added to you how as you advance in your seeking the kingdom as you advance in 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 understanding what the kingdom is everything you need for your sustenance to keep advancing in the kingdom will be added to you and guess what you won't go look after them i'm telling you the truth Everyone who have walked in this truth will tell you that's how it works. You want money in your life? Oh, you keep struggling to meet your needs? I'm telling you, this is how to get it solved. Seek the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. When he says seek the kingdom, he wasn't talking about being born again alone. And so I'm born again now, so I've come to the kingdom. Hey, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about, hey, understand the workings of the kingdom. And how do you understand the workings of the kingdom? By understanding the knowledge of his will. And that's what Paul was saying here. Being filled with the knowledge of his will. Whatever you want to do in life, be filled with the knowledge of his will. Oh, you want to get married or you are married already? How well do you know the knowledge of the will of God concerning marriage? How well have you studied it? How well have you asked the Lord? How well? You know, I, I hear people say all sort of, um, permit me to say all sort of, uh, let me let me be kind truly with my words. You know, sometimes people speak without understanding. They do. And the reason is because they have not spent their time to know. Now, when I say spend their time, I'm talking about spending their mind, occupying their mind to know the knowledge of God's will in a particular situation. We are too quick to act without knowing what the mind of the Lord is. You know, 
before you take up any endeavor, maybe you want to apply for a new job. Maybe you want to relocate. You've been feeling this thing about relocating. Maybe you want to get married. Maybe you want to build a house. Maybe you want to start a ministry. Whatever it is, the first thing you are supposed to do is to present your mind to know the mind of God concerning this. Lord, I am thinking of building a house. What do you think about this? Now that's how you start. What do you think about this, Lord? I'm thinking of getting married this year. Or maybe you're already married and there are challenges in your marriage. You don't understand what to do. You don't understand where it's coming from. Don't be too quick to lay blames. Oh, it's my wife. She's, she's like this and she's like that and she's like that. It doesn't matter. You know, I tell people, you know, when you begin to complain, say, I don't know what kind of wife I married. Hey, I should ask you, I don't know what kind of man you are. He said, what do you mean by that? That was your choice. Was she forced on you? Um, actually, no, she wasn't forced on you. Nobody put a gun on your head and said, unless you marry this woman, we'll shoot you to death. You made that choice. So this is the manifestation of your wisdom. See that now? Even God is not going to force you. He would, he would make his mind known to you. He can, God can tell you, oh, this person is going to be good for you. Oh, he can. God can direct you. I have, there are people who God have told, you know, in a vision or by instruction, go to so and so place. You will see something. And they get there and they meet this person. And the Lord said, that's your wife. They heard it clearly. Even such relationships, they have challenges. See that now? Now, the, the question then is when those challenges come, what do you do? Are you too quick to make a decision and say, I think I made a mistake. So what should you have done? See that now? So even in that situation, it's still your choice. It's still your choice to say, Lord, thank you. You've shown me this person, but... Um, I don't think I want it. I'm telling you, it's still your choice. And remember this. There are consequences to every decision that you make. There are consequences to the choices you make in life. So when you begin to complain, remember this was your choice. This was the submission of your wisdom. You chose to spend the rest of your life with this person. Opting out today because of a challenge that is there. However, that challenge came, how maybe, you know, because sometimes the challenge is actually in your mind, not in what the person is doing. The challenge is in your interpretation of the person's action. Now, as, 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 as a minister of the gospel, as a pastor, as I counsel people, this is where, where I, this is one thing I get to find out mostly. The challenge is always in the mind of the complainer. Because all God will do to you is to change the way you see. And that's all, you know, Lord, Lord change my wife, change my wife, change my wife. He doesn't really change your wife. The first thing God will do is to make change you. And how does it change you? By enlightening the eyes of your understanding. The thing you call a wall, he opens your eyes to see that it's not really a wall. You can push it and it will break. And then you go ahead and touch it and it falls like, whoa. So the same thing, oh, my wife is always doing, my wife, and then the Lord says to you, hey, why don't you act this way? Oh. I didn't think about that before. But you see, many people don't get to that point. Now, what am I talking about? Being filled with the knowledge of his will. See? Understanding what you were going into in the first place. 
So when the challenges begin to come, you will understand that I didn't just come here foolishly. I made this decision. So you know what? This challenge, I'm going to fix it. And that's, of course, you can only fix it when you're honest to yourself. Everything you're dealing with in life, your job, your family, your, your personal life, everything, the first principle of solving the issues properly is you being honest to yourself. I've seen people who they come to you, oh, pastor, just tell me what I'm supposed to do. And say, okay, go and do this. Thank you, sir. I'll do it. And then they just, they actually go do what you say, but truly their heart didn't change. So in no time, the challenges are going to come back. The person is still going to run back and say, oh, it's still not working because they didn't change. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Why? Being filled with the knowledge of his will. And then he says, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We've talked about this. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. Not partly pleasing him. Fully pleasing him. And I'll tell you one secret. Jesus made a statement. He said, my father has not left me alone. He says, because I do always those things that please him. Wow, that's a secret right there. That's a secret right there. My father has not left me alone because I do always those things that please him. Some people think, oh, God said I should preach the gospel. I've accepted that ministry. I wanted to be an engineer. I wanted to be a medical doctor. But God says, no, he wants me to preach the gospel. I've accepted. So I'm doing the will of God. So everything is supposed to work out for me. No, sir. The will of God is what you find out in every other thing that you do every day. That's how you please the Father. The fact that you accepted to preach doesn't mean you have fully pleased the Father. See that now? You have just pleased the Father in one. Number two, the message you preach has to be the message that he wants you to preach. Even in your, even in your accepting the call to the ministry. That is knowledge number two. Pleasing number two. To preach where he wants you to preach is another way you please him. You see that now? So it's not the, oh, God said I should preach. And then you think you can just go look for any message and start preaching because you are doing what God says you should do, preach. No, sir. There is a reason he wanted you to preach. There is a message he wants you to communicate. There is a people he wants you to communicate that message to. And there's a place he wants you to communicate that message. But that's how, So when you take the time and apply your mind to knowing the will of God in all these things, then you realize because you become willing to do his will. And then that's when you realize that you are fully pleasing him. Fully pleasing him. Issues will come up in your life. Rather than rushing to take a decision concerning it, you pause and say, Lord, what do you think about this? And you wait until his wisdom is revealed to you. That's why when they brought the woman caught in the act of adultery, Jesus didn't just rush to answer them. The Bible said they met him writing on the floor. And then when they asked him, he, he bent, put his head down, and he continued writing. What was he doing? I'll tell you what he was doing, Father. What do you think? What's your mind concerning this situation? Because the Lord knows the truth. He knows the truth. I was asking the Lord, now this is between me and the Lord. So you don't have to accept it. I was asking the Lord, Lord, how come you just freed that woman 
the, the lady they brought to him caught in the act of adultery. How come you just freed that woman? And the Lord said to me, because the blame is to her husband, why she actually committed adultery. Now, now, we didn't see that part, but God sees what happened. You see that now? Not because he condones it, but you see, he's a God of truth and justice. So he sees it. And so he's not going to condemn the woman. And you know, they didn't bring the man. He's not going to condemn the woman. But how is Jesus going to do this? He had to wait for the wisdom of God to come to him. And when the wisdom of God came to him, he spoke the wisdom of God, freed the woman, didn't break the law. See that now? He didn't break the law. Now that's why it's so important. Now, now even though Jesus knew that these guys were trying to tempt him, he could have said, you people want to tempt him back because he want me to, and so this is what I'm going to tell you. No, he knew they were trying to tempt him. He knew they were trying to trap him. But hey, he waited for the wisdom of God. Now, Ale Barushia, the wisdom of God, it will beat any intelligence. I'm telling you the truth. So Jesus spoke and said, anyone without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. Now look for how you are going to trap that statement and accuse him of anything. Now that's one thing they never expected him to say. That's an angle because before they went to meet Jesus, they had calculated and looked at every possible answer he was going to give. And they knew whatever answer Jesus was going to give according to their, their calculation would be wrong. They would trap him with it. But when Jesus spoke, because he spoke by the wisdom of God. Guess what happened? No one could accuse him. Praise God. My time is up for today. Hey, we're going to have a great time this week. I know, I know. If you will apply your heart to these words. I pray for you today. Indeed, your heart, your mind will be filled with the knowledge of God's will. I pray that you will be pleasing the Lord in all faiths and you will see manifestation of his grace and power in your life. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.